Hey, what's up, Classic TV fans? My name is Rick Nang G. Thank you so much for joining me today. We're going to be talking about The Twilight Zone, more specifically about one of the most popular episodes ever. It's called Living Doll. I'm still a bit under the weather, so if you hear my voice is a little bit different, you all know why. Now, I want to talk about this Living Doll episode. I would say it's in my top 15 favorites of all time when we talk about Twilight Zone. Now there will be spoilers for what happens in the story, so if you haven't seen it, stop this video right now, watch the episode, and then come back to this video. Now this episode comes along quite late in the anthology of Twilight Zone. It actually comes from season 5, it's episode 6, Living Doll as I mentioned, and it actually aired November 1963 quite late throughout the year. Now we have guest starring, of course, the amazing Telly Savalas, and we have the doll herself, Taki Tina, who was voiced by the equally very talented June Ferre. She did a lot of voice Why acting throughout that era, I so she's fairly well known. You. Now we're gonna be talking about what makes this episode so unique, and in fact, the secret that made it so, so good. Now Rod Serling begins by telling us that Taki Tina is a doll that does pretty much everything. She's a lifelike creation of plastic and springs, and she has a painted smile on her. Now to the quote unquote dad in this story played by Telly, she is not welcome. He does not like her. Not a great addition to the household in his mind. But without her, he would never go into the twilight zone. That is of course a loose, a loose look at the narration from Rod Serling. Now his stepdaughter comes home and buys this expensive doll for Christy. That's the little girl's name. His wife is Annabelle, which is interesting. We'll come back to the name Annabelle in just a little bit. Now the doll herself um, appears and he immediately dislikes her. He's a grumpy guy. He's not a great stepfather at all. But the doll vocalizes, hey, I'm Taki Tina and I love you and says all these beautiful and wonderful things, but when the little doll encounters Telly, or that is Eric's character, they do not get along at all. There's an obvious hatred that she has of him. Now he launches a doll into the wall and puts her into the garbage, but Takitina escapes, phones him with a death threat, and he tries to save himself. He tries to burn the doll, he tries to saw the head off, but he Everything fails, and it's really interesting why it fails. It seems like everything around him doesn't seem to work. The doll really doesn't come alive. There's very brief movements, but it's all audio, and that's what makes it creepier. The doll does not walk around, doesn't hide behind a corner. The doll really never moves, except for the normal movements that the doll makes, which is like a quick back and forth and so forth. It's pretty crazy. Now the character of Eric continues his actions, and he tries to tell his wife that there's something wrong with the doll. And so he tries and continues to get rid of it, and they agree that something needs to be done. But late one night, he's investigating a sound. He trips on the doll, falls down the stairs to his death. Now his wife Annabelle rushes to him and picks up the doll, and the doll says, my name is Takitina, and you'd better be nice to me. I mean, that ending to me is just perfect. There's nothing better than that ending. The fact of the doll was just laying there. The, the leg of the doll wasn't like out, and then he tripped on the leg, nothing like that. It was just the doll was on the stairs. He didn't see it, and he fell. So it creates this mystery in your mind. Is this guy going nuts, or is this doll really out to get him, and no one's believing him? Um, it's just a really, really mental game that you're playing while watching this entire episode. Now, it's one of the most popularly remembered episodes of The Twilight Zone. Um, there are things now like bobbleheads, different dolls that talk. And if you even remember the series, the horror film series, Chucky, from 1988 through 2017, and still movies are coming out. And then the Annabelle films, yes, the name of the wife as well. Coincidence? Probably not. Annabelle with The Conjuring and, and Annabelle the Creation and so forth. All these dolls come alive, and it's creepy. And I mean, Chucky made the doll walk, and, 
and it added another dimension to everything. But let me tell you, I think here that who essentially sold this episode was Telly Savalas. What he did was to create this character that was truly sinister. He was just a mean old guy. He was mean to his daughter, um, essentially, and it really came through on screen. It was his performance that was the foundation for June Foray to do the voice of the doll. And so we wanted the doll to defeat him, to put an end to the reign of terror that he was having at home with his little girl and his wife and so forth. And so we're cheering for Taki Tina here. And the fact that Taki Tina isn't walking around, that she is having this conversation with this man, at least whether it's in his mind or it's between the three of us, the audience, the doll and Eric, that's what makes it so strong that a lot of this is in our mind. A lot of what we're seeing is in our mind and that makes it so strong no special effects nothing like that it's all a mind game that this episode's playing with us and that leaves a lasting impression to us that's something that chucky annabelle can't do they can't match up to and that's why this episode is secretly so so good i want to know your thoughts let me know what you enjoyed the most whose performance did you enjoy and overall what do you think of this episode i'd really love to know your thoughts down below don't forget to hit the thumbs up button it is helping me feel better seeing all your happy amazing comments your support it really does it's hard to get sick, right? And I'm sure a lot of people have gotten sick, but to be able to just see so much encouragement, so much love, it really does help out. So thank you so much. We'll see you next time. And don't forget, be hopeful. Thank you to everyone for the support, especially my diamond tier patrons, Citizen Kane 359 David D, Greg S, Kevin K, Ricky, Sally N, Ulysses the P, and Vito L. If you want to join the Patreon family, links are in the description. Thank you.